if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you already know what Demotics is. For those who don't, here's the abridged version. Demotics is a free, open source home automation system with a small size. It can be installed on many different platforms, including some network connected drives and the Raspberry Pi. Demotics can control a wide plethora of devices, from Internet of Things enabled to more basic radio controlled devices. It uses a database to keep track of all your connected home, any type of device you can think of, and brings everything to one place so that you can control your whole home from one interface. There are many more features to Demotics, and I'll be covering some of them in this video. Many of the concepts I cover here are applicable to a small number of other holistic home control systems, but definitely cannot be applied to any one manufacturer smart home ecosystem such as Samsung SmartThings, nor even the Apple HomeKit ecosystem. I must also add that the following opinions are mine alone, and you may not share them. Feel free to make your own points in the comments section. Lua and these events. Lua is a programming language natively supported by Demotics and has immediate access to all devices you have added to your Demotics database. These events is a dialect of Lua, which is specifically created to work alongside Demotics. According to the website, Lua is a powerful, efficient, lightweight, embeddable script language. It supports procedural programming, object oriented programming, functional programming, data-driven programming, and data description. An example is that I use Lua to get the living room humidity from an Oregon scientific sensor. And if it is high, check that a dummy switch called environment automation is on. And if it is, send a command to a Lightwave RF plug to switch on the dehumidifier. If the Lua script is to be actioned whenever a switch or event is turned on, you save the Lua script with the prefix script device. And if the script is to be actioned once per minute, then you save the script with the prefix script time. As with many features of Demotics, they are partially documented on the Demotics wiki and then thoroughly covered in the Demotics forum. In 2019, I'd have to compare Lua with IFTTT. Although IFTTT is incredibly useful to produce small programs using one input and one output, it can respond too slowly for my liking, and only one input and output can be used per program, so the example I quoted above would not be possible in IFTTT. Blockly. Blockly is another way of selecting and programming events and how to respond to them. Similar to other drag and drop programming environments, such as Scratch, Blockly takes a graphical approach to programming, providing tiles which only fit together if a successful program can be made out of them. Satisfying as it is powerful, Blockly can be used by anyone to quickly lay out an at time U, if W and X, but not Y, then do Z. Because Blockly is built into Demotics, the second you save the outline, Demotics takes over and runs it for you. Scripts. Because Demotics is resident on a computer platform, in Linux if installed on a Raspberry Pi, or on a low-powered Windows PC, it can respond to changes in the smart home environment by running scripts and launching programs that have been written for the platform itself. An example of this for me is that I can run a program to get an authentication token and then switch on my twinkly LED programmable balcony lights when a timer event goes off in Demotics or a dummy switch is activated. Because a script can do almost anything a computer can do, there is no real comparison with using IFTTT or any system cloud service, or even a one manufacturer hub, because there is no programmable operating system on such a hub. Inbuilt web server with URL calls and JSON responses. This for me is the solidifying reason why I will continue to use Demotics for years to come. A pre-made HTML interface comes with the program, and this is useful for adding and removing devices, checking on status of devices and viewing the log, but add another index.htm to a new folder, and Demotics serves up an interface in whatever flavour you like. 
You don't have to stick with developing the default look and feel. You can just start from scratch and let your creative juices flow. Because you can send instructions to Demotics via URL calls and receive responses in the form of JSON, with some understanding of JavaScript, you can create interactive and responsive interfaces. Multi-manufacturer support. Demotics supports many devices from all the major manufacturers, from older 433 MHz devices to modern Wi-Fi ones. Because hardware is only limited to what you can attach to the machine Demotics is running on, theoretically you can add as many external devices to help you connect to your smart home. If you've decided to stick with older hardware, communicating not via Wi-Fi but via 433 MHz radio, a good purchase would be an RFCOM RFX TRX 433E, which will enable two-way communication with compatible devices throughout your home. I use Demotics and the RFCOM transceiver to communicate with Lightwave RF, Oregon Scientific, Byron and other generic brand products. Demotics can also natively work with infrared home control systems such as Harmony, so that IR controlled devices like air conditioners can be turned on and off just as easily as radio or Wi-Fi ones. If additional functionality is required, then other open source programs can be installed on the same system as Demotics and then called as scripts as needed. The ability to communicate with other brand products is not unique to Demotics, however the sheer number of products and protocols which can be appended to the one control system is unbeaten if matched at all. With so many devices still using their own wireless languages to speak to each other, curating your perfect smart home becomes costly and cumbersome. All those hubs just to speak slightly different languages to your different brand products. Demotics certainly helps with that. Excellent community. The Demotics community is enthusiastic and helpful. There are many active threads in the Demotics forum, and many active YouTubers and bloggers record their challenges and successes so that we can all learn from one another. Incredibly talented people help to develop Demotics for nothing other than the good of the community. An example of Demotics helping to control a modern smart home in 2019. I started with the Demotics installed on a Raspberry Pi. In order to communicate with some of my older hardware and some cheaper home control devices, I needed to communicate via radio. I decided to add on an RFX transceiver. This then immediately meant I could control 433 MHz plugs and other devices and also receive data from wireless thermometers and wireless switches. I also had Philips Hue, so I added that to Demotics as a device and could then control that bridge through the system too. There were also Wi-Fi devices that I needed controlling, and as most come with some kind of application programming interface, I just needed to work out how to authenticate and communicate with them over the network, then write the scripts. I could then use Demotics to work out when to launch the scripts and leave it to Demotics to run them as required. I also wanted to create a custom interface to my home control system. So as Demotics has a built-in web server, I created HTML pages and uploaded them to the www folder of the Demotics program and then pointed my browser at the location. Because the interface is programmed in HTML, I can use JavaScript to contact Demotics and directly connect to other devices on my network without having to even ask Demotics to do anything. With some creativity, the interactions you can make possible using Demotics as a central resource are amazing. Pressing a light switch and lights changing should be a seamless experience. After all, if the process in a smart home is more complicated than in a non-smart home, then the solution isn't working. Demotics has enabled me to link up 433 MHz control pads to the Hue lighting system by doing the following. The control pad sends a signal, which is received by the transceiver. Via USB, the transceiver sends the message to Demotics. Demotics realises that a switch has been pressed, and then sends a message via the home network to the Hue bridge. The Hue bridge receives the signal from Demotics, then sends a signal via another type of radio wave. 
The wave is picked up by a nearby hue bulb, and then the message is forwarded on again to other nearby bulbs. This process continues until the bulbs in this location you want to control receive the message and change their state. This all happens within a split second, so the result is you press a button and the lights change. Conclusion There are many different smart home ecosystems attempting to sell you their hub as a complete solution. It can be difficult to work out if the devices you have now and the ones you want in the future are all going to be compatible with the system you invest your hard-earned time and money into. Online solutions such as IFTTT help to connect your disparate home control devices together, but in order for IFTTT to send out an order to your device, it needs to connect via the internet to a dedicated hub to repeat the message in your home, unless the product happens to have Wi-Fi built in. As at 2019, many home control devices don't have built-in Wi-Fi. Rather, they communicate using lower energy radio waves using a hub capable of receiving and sending such messages. The hub is connected to the internet and acts as an orchestrator to the devices in your home. With so many devices still using their own wireless languages to speak to each other, curating your perfect smart home becomes costly and cumbersome, all those hubs just to speak slightly different languages to your different brand products. There's another problem. Because each product supplier wants you to concentrate your energies on using their own ecosystem, they require you to use their own app to control their devices. So by the time you've collected enough devices to create your ideal smart home, you've got 12 apps on your phone and 5 hubs attached to your router. This is where Demotics steps in. With some investment, all of your devices can be controlled from one place, using timers or switches, however you want. I do not pretend that getting everything to work together seamlessly is easy, but as a hobbyist it's very satisfying to complete a project and add a new type of device to our smart home. I heartily recommend Demotics to use in 2019, and until a standard home control protocol is agreed internationally, then I will continue to use it well into the 2020s. <laughs>